You're still watching the Pulse on a Joy News channel on Multi TV. This is your election headquarters. Before we talk about the Electoral Commission and their related issues, we know that on the campaign trail, all the political parties have been busy. The NDC, the MPP, the CPP, PNC, and also the PPP. Well, joining us today via Skype is Dr. Papa Kusindom. Uh, he is the flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party. They've been busy. We've seen him talk about him not being a talker, but a doer. But let's hear him uh, tell us about how the campaign trail has been for him this week in the Volta region. Thank you, sir, for joining us uh, today. Uh, thanks for your time. Well, thank you very much for having me. Right. Um, so uh, your tour in the Volta region was largely to adore many of your parliamentary candidates. But what's been the central message you've been carrying through for all the people in the region? Well, the, 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 this week, um, we've been doing a variety of, of campaign activities, uh, not just the Volta region, the Eastern region as well. And then we've been doing, uh, trying to get our message across through the media, including social media. Um, and in particular, well, many people are interested in what we're doing in the Volta region. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but perhaps it has to do with our running mate coming from that particular region. Mm. But mm. It, it is important for everybody to know that our presence in the regions uh, is so much different, so much better this time in 2016 than what it was in 2012 for obvious reasons. In 2012, we were new. Many people were just curious about us. They weren't sure if we were going to stick around. Now they know we, we are around. They know we are active. But they also know that we have placed some good candidates out there in all of the 10 regions in various constituencies, obviously not in every constituency, but in various constituencies. And many of them are very active, going door to door, village to village. So by the time I get there, or my running mate or national officers get there, uh, there's been already activity that has gone on in, in the ground. And so it is softer for us. Uh, there's a better reaction, much positive reaction, particularly from the young men and women. So now when we go, we don't have to explain the Progressive People's Party. As soon as they see us, they say, Prepapa Prekun, Pati Papapa, Ipumura, Okay, now, uh, much as you say that the ground has softened in terms of how you go about the campaign this time around compared to 2012, you know in politics also, people may give you their listening ear, but that does, that does not automatically translate into votes. So what is the plan here in not just getting their attention, but convincing them to translate that attention into votes? Well, what is important is, is you know, where you go, and you yourself, you know, you don't have anyone permanent on the ground. Uh, you know that you are waving to people, they are waving back to you, and so on and so forth. So the difference this time around for us is that in, in many of the places that we go to, we can tell where we have uh, support that will last by the fact that we have people who have joined us and are not just holding our cards, but are actively working. And now we have a program of people uh, doing weekly, weekly activity reports. Um, and then we send volunteers out there to go and check. So we're not taking anybody's word for it. We're not just taking the people waving at us uh, for granted. We are sending people out there uh, to, to let us know where we really have uh, real support we can count on and, and where, well, maybe some people are just joking with us. So we, we, are, we now have a better ability to tell which areas are good and which areas are not good. And at the end of September, we are going to sit down and do a complete assessment uh, of where we should really pr more productively, profitably spend our time for the rest of the campaign, the two months that would, would be left um, after that. So... Uh, we, we are running, if you will, uh, a business-like uh, campaign at this time. And, you know, we didn't start our campaign with a presidential campaign. We started with a national parliamentary campaign uh, because our agenda for 2016 
requires that we put people in parliament so that they can push for amendments to the constitution. So we're serious about this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we, we don't know uh, and we don't want to say which constituencies these are, but we've got about 50 constituencies that we are very serious about, that we are concentrating a lot of time and attention on with the hope that we can win some of those constituencies and, and have vociferous, uh, well-speaking people in parliament to push that agenda, that constitution change agenda uh, for the PPP and for the nation. Okay. Now, 50, I can imagine, is the number for the entire country of seats you're targeting. But for the Volta region specific, where you've been to within this week, how many seats is the PPP targeting? Well, um, it, it, you know, for, for, for tactical reasons, it, it is not wise for us to talk about these matters. But the fact of the matter is that, um, and quite realistically, yes, we are playing and doing things in all of the constituencies. However, however, uh, if, if, I, if I were just to, you know, tell you a number without being specific about which ones, um, we feel that we have a good chance in six constituencies uh, in the Volta region. Um, but, but we are working in all of them. Uh, we are hoping that if nothing at all, we should be able to win two out of the six constituencies that we, we are seriously working at in the Volta region. But, you know, the Volta region, uh, many people had given up on the Volta region. Some people, when they hear that we're going there, they say, ah, you're going to waste your time. But I can tell you that the people in the Volta region, they won't change. Um, but what they have experienced in the past is that many people have just said, ah, you know, this one is for NDC, so why bother? Mm. Well, we are bothering. We, we are going there. And we will keep going there. And we believe that they will reward us uh, with, with some serious votes and, and, and at least two parliamentary seats from that region. Okay, I'm just curious. Uh, you've mentioned the bigger target of 56 in Volta region. Two is what you're banking your hopes on getting for this year's election. How about your home region, the central region? How many seats are you targeting? I, 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 I'd rather not go into the numbers game <laughs> because it happened to us the last time. The last time when we started talking about specific constituencies, some political parties was just zoned in on, on those constituencies and did all sorts of things to collapse our campaigns. I mean, everybody knows that KEEA is my home constituency. Uh, so definitely, I, I am working. I'm going to spend more time there. That one is no secret to anybody. Mm. Um, uh, and we know that the other two parties, especially NDC and MPP, uh, also knowing that that is my home constituency, they've been coming there repeatedly. Uh, President Mahama has been to my constituency, uh, I would say, in the past six months, at least three times. Um, uh, former President Kufu has been there, uh, Baumia, all sorts of people have been there. So I know that game. But um, I'd rather not get into a numbers game. All I am saying is that we overall, we know how many constituencies there are. We have graded all of them. So we have our top 50, we have our next uh, 100, and so on and so forth. And we are working. Uh, okay. But the top 50 changes. It changes month by month. Because somebody may be in our top 50 this month, the next month it gets dropped and another one comes. It all depends on how active, active and, and serious uh, our parliamentary candidates are. They are the legs that we are standing on. Because I can only go to a constituency and maybe spend an hour, two hours, and that's all. Uh, and and if, if I can go back there another time, three times, um, uh, it, that, it, that's plenty of times. So we need people right there in the constituencies working. And I'm glad to say that this time around, we have got people working for the party. And, and you know, this thing that people used to put us down on the, the issue of wasted votes, this time it's not working. Okay, it's and working. it's good you've raised that point because there's also something that's come up as you have been on this campaign trail. Some have said that there is a tag you bear, you, you may say is right or wrong, that some Ghanaians have been uh, describing you as the best president Ghana will never have. So how are you dealing with that tag? How do you seek to turn that in your favor? Well, uh, we're dealing with it head on. We are letting people understand
when we say per papa preku, what we're saying is if you know this one is the best, uh, why mess around with it, and and why why not go for the best right away? Um, and also, uh, many people themselves are coming to say, don't mind those people; they are just doing it deliberately uh, just to discourage people from voting for you. And I can give you a specific instance. Uh, President Mahama went to Salaga North this past week, and he went there. He didn't have much of any positive thing to tell them, he, but all that he said is that, yes, you needed water. Parkway Syndrome has brought you water, uh, but don't mind him. He, he, you vote for him, you waste your vote. But they yelled back at him that, what have you done for us? What has your uh, MP done for us? What has your district chief executive done for us? So this time, the people are not buying that propaganda. Okay, many people aren't. And, and, and unfortunately, it is some of the, uh, let's say, so-called educated elite people, especially from Accra, who are saying those things. But the people back there, they are saying, we know the difference. And, and we will not uh, allow anyone uh, to pull a fast one on us this time. Okay. The last thing I ask you about, Dr. Indom, is about uh, the latest reports we got from the Electoral Commission. Uh, on the audited accounts and the documents you have presented to them. The risk concern is that for some number of years now, since 2012, your accounts you've not submitted. Why is that? That cannot be true for the Progressive People's Party. We have been submitting our accounts. Uh, if someone from the EC is telling you that, please ask them again, not the PPP. We've been doing it regularly. When was the last time you sent it? The last time was just this, just this past year. We've done 2015. You've done 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. You're current. Another political party, but not PPP. Okay, Dr. Endom, thank you for your time today. I'm sure that we'll get to talk some time later. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Right. Uh, that's the uh, flag of the PPP, Dr. Papakwesi Endom, talking about his campaign in the voter in the Eastern Region, talking about his targets for the party going into this year's election. Well, talking about elections, well, the Electoral Commission, has had, it has been pretty much... A chaotic day at their headquarters because prospective voters arrive there in their numbers with the hope of being registered on the last day of the EC's continuous registration program. Across the country, qualified individuals who are yet to be registered onto the electoral roll have up until 5 p.m. today to get their names on. In Accra, John Mrs. Joseph Akable was at the EC headquarters where three district centers are stationed. The Electoral Commission office in Accra, where it's the last day of the limited registration exercise. Now, the Electoral Commission, after having an interaction at the IPAC level, decided to extend um, the exercise to ensure that those who couldn't register and I take the exercise. Now, here at the office, also a district office as well, possible voters from the Yawa, so West Wagon constituency, they have all massed up here to undertake the registration exercise. So, I'm going around to interact with some of them to find out, first and foremost, how the process has been for them, how long they came in, and the excitement to as well, because this offers an opportunity for them them to register how long have you been here and how has it been okay we've been here for about an hour now i think the queue was moving so i think very soon we're going to get out of here yeah but are you excited about this we understand today is the last day and what it means is that uh, this is your last opportunity to get onto the electoral rule <laughs> of course everybody will be excited if you have been given the chance to exercise your franchise and the nation's determination of who the leader is of course you should be excited you should feel very important to have that platform so it's good that EC is giving everybody the chance. I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, let me speak to another gentleman here. How long have you been here? I think we were here around 5 a.m., as early as 5 a.m. But looking at the queue here, it's quite hectic. And um, I don't know whether there is not enough logistics for them to get re-registered. Because looking at the number here, it's quite a huge number. I'm from University of Ghana campus coming here to register. And looking at this queue, the same thing went on during the limited registration. Uh, and we weren't able to register. And this time too, I don't know whether we will get the opportunity to be registered. because. The population here is quite huge and we are pleading with them if there is not um, enough logistics for them to get us registered they should really do so because once we are here and we we want to also exercise our franchise and we don't want a situation whereby we cannot be registered so we will plead to the ec so that they can if they can provide us 
some logistics so that we can be registered. Hey, this is what I want to suggest to complement what my brother is saying. You know, we can deal with online registration. It's much more easier and then I think pretty effective. Even for WASI, like my mates were telling me, even WASI and of deck, we do online registration and people still get the registration through. So I think the easy should try to look for more technological ways instead of this tete a tete registration. For about five hours now. You came here around which time? Um, like, was it at uh, 8.30 there? Or, yeah, early, early in the morning, like 7, 8 there. So I guess it's just your hope that before uh, the day ends you'll be able to register? Oh yeah, sure. I'm hoping that I'll be able to register by the end of today. If not, then I'm not sure I'll even try like do it again. Campus, like long queues, like there are lots of people, and then you have to balance every classes as well. You get there. So I wasn't able to do it during that time. And when we vacated, I went home to, they were done with that place. So I had to come back to school and see if I'll be able to do it here. But it appears you are still facing a key challenge. challenge here. Yeah, yeah. But then, as I said, like I'm hoping I'll be able to do it at the end of the day. So those are the views of some um, Ghanaian citizens who are of the voting age and they want to take part in this year's election. And they've all must that be as part of the limited registration exercise that the Electoral Commission decided to extend. It was two days, it was agreed at IPAC. This is the last day, the opportunity for those who couldn't get onto the register to also get onto the register. And you can see them here, hundreds massing up here at the Commission's office. That also serves as a district office, all with the hope of getting onto the register. Joseph Akable, Joy News. Well, that's the picture here in Accra at the EC headquarters. But in the northern region, we're learning that there are some developments in terms of the forms needed for proxy voting and registration. We can speak to Martina Bugri, uh, our correspondent in the northern region, for an update on this. Martina, what's the challenge with the proxy uh, registration forms? Some people have said they visited some of the offices of the EC in the region here to. Um, fake forms and then register, but they are told that there are no forms. And we're trying to speak to the Metro East director, but no other. Okay, and in view of that, what's happening at these centers as we speak? Martina, I'm asking what the reaction has been to the shortage of the forms. Well, they say that they would not like to miss their vote because if they are unable to register, it means they will not have access to be able to vote on the voting day. And that, that is not too good for them. All right. Thank you for that update. Uh, let's try and get some answers on these developments happening uh, on this day when the registration exercise is being done at the very last day. In fact, we're joining in the studio by the Deputy Head of Communications at the EC, Mr. Yusif Ayuba. Thank you for joining us, sir. You're welcome. You saw the report, first of all, from your own backyard, the EC headquarters. This was supposed to be a very smooth exercise. How come we are having these problems today? Thank you very much. Um, this morning, the numbers were overwhelming, but uh, we, we anticipated uh, these numbers. So we made sure we increased uh, the registration kits to uh, five um, for a district. So we've increased the registration kits for, for the Ayawaso um, West Wagon. And we hopefully, uh, as at the time I was leaving the office, the queues, you know, had considerably gone down. So we'll, we'll make sure that all persons who, who appear there to, you know, to register will be registered. We are extending the period to 8 p.m. today. So if after 8 p.m. we still have uh, people in the queue, then we'll extend the exercise tomorrow. And that will be across the country, you mean? Yes, but it will depend on, on, on as, as we speak, there are certain centers in, 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 in the country where, you know, um, there are no, no queues, you know, people are not even coming to the offices to register. Those centers will not, will not open because it will be a waste of time. But we are looking at centers where um, after 8 p.m. today, we still have a lot of people in the queue. We'll extend it to tomorrow okay. so that we will be able to capture all of them. Okay. Now, in terms of the process, and as you saw in that report by uh, Joseph Akable, he mentions that for many who came around, the communication and getting across and getting this done was poorly done. How come? We've, we've, we've done enough publicity. We, we, we've told um, all persons who wanted to you know, take advantage of this continuous registration. We, we gave them the, the, the dates and, and the time that the exercise was, was taking place. So we had done that you know, a long time ago, and we expect that. You know, last week, Friday, we were expecting a lot of people to come. 
but we didn't have, you know, just a, a handful of persons came. And, and we are surprised that today, you know, the, the, the number of persons, especially students from the University of Ghana, you know, they've come in their number. So we'll make, we've made enough provision for, for, uh, for them. So at the end of the day, like I said, at 8 p.m., mm -hmm. if there are, they are, you know, more people to be captured. We'll extend the exercise to tomorrow. Okay. Now, we had Martina mention that issue uh, in the northern region where proxy forms are in shortage. Why? You didn't provide enough for each region? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time and, and I'm surprised. Uh, this, this should be a localized issue. The regional directorate, you know, would, would be able to handle this. If uh, they don't have enough forms, they, they would, they would send requisition in Accra and they'll get enough from this. The proxy exercise is, is, is going up to 26th of September, so there's enough time for enough any, time. anybody who wants to take advantage of the proxy to, to get a form. Okay. For anyone who is across the country who would want to do the uh, registration, even after today, what happens? What, should, what will be that process or that opportunity for that person? If persons out there are still at the registration centers and up to 8 p.m. today and they are not able to register. We will open the registration centers at the district offices come tomorrow so they can, they can go home and come back tomorrow morning so that we will get their names in the register. Okay, and just for clarity, all these, all these individuals who are getting this opportunity, will they be allowed to vote in this year's election? Yes, they will be voting come December 7th elections. But I thought there was a certain provision that six clear months to an election no other names can be adopted into it the register? 60 days to the election. 60 days, 60 right days. Okay. Yes. So, um, we say continuous registration exercise. So, why should there be a date for an end for it? If, if you look at the law, um, CI 91, Section 9, 1 of the law, says mm -hmm. that the Electoral Commission shall do continuous registration. And the same law, Section 2, says that the Electoral Commission shall, in consultation with the political parties, agree on the modalities. So, this is the modalities that... Uh, the, the Electoral Commission and the political parties have agreed on that every Friday of the week should be set aside for continuous registration. But for the purpose of those who want to take advantage of the elections in December, we, we gave them the, the, the 19th and the 26th so that any person who did the registration in these two days would, would be allowed to vote come uh, December 2016, 7. Okay. All right. That's for the issue of the registration exercise. But something also happened today at your office. You launched your communication strategy. What's in the strategy? We have a lot of things in the strategy. If you would uh, recall, we, we launched a five-year strategic plan. And uh, we, we expect, you know, it's, it's a whole plan from, from now till 2020. And there are activities and programs in, in, in the strategic plan. So in, in order for us to be able to you know, communicate these strategic con the content of the strategic plan and, and the activities that we would embark on, we needed to come up with a strategy so that we will use it to, to communicate to our major stakeholders. And for the strategy you speak of, what will be the key important ones that Ghanaians who are watching you now should pay attention to? You know, it's, it's in two parts. We have the internal communication and the external communication. In, mm. in, internally, we, we, we must be able to, you know, send information to our regional directorate and also to the district directorate because they need this information to pass on to, to, to persons outside Accra. Secondly, we, we also need to, to, to communicate to the outside world. And, and normally, we, we do that through the media. And also, there are so many activities that the Electoral Commission embarks on that we, 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 we want to project those activities because if we do not do it, then it means that people will not know exactly what we are doing. So that is why we came up with this strategy, so as to help us you know, send mm -hmm. such information to the general public. Bam Yuba, since 1992, when we started doing elections in this country, the EC has always had a measure of communication. There's always been a communication strategy. What is super new about the strategy? We, we, need, we need to improve upon what we do. We, we will not say because we've been able to you know, send information out there, that, that means it's, it's enough. If, if you look at um, the, the strategy that we've, we've adopted, if, if you watch our website currently, we've, we've updated it, we've, we've put a lot of information um, on, on the website for 
persons who want to um, get information from the Electoral Commission who are technologically savvy and people who live outside the country can use the, our website for, for information. We are also very active on, on social media these days. So people who are active on social media and who want information from the Electoral Commission can have access to, to um, 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 our Facebook page. And we, we are using a lot of um, other channels of, of um, communication to you know, disseminate information. Because, because some will say, EC has always been communicating. You've had a strategy for years. Are you not reinventing the wheel? We, we are not because now we, we, we have uh, the strategy documented. In the past, you didn't have that? It, it was fragmented. Now we have it documented. When you say so, fragmented, it means you had it, but yes, it was in as, different pieces. Yes, so now we have it in a document that the, 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 the people of Ghana can hold us responsible for it. And it will also guide us you know, in, in trying to deploy these communication strategies to, 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 to help us you know, send information to the general public. Okay, so it was fragmented. It's now been put into one document. When it was fragmented, what were, what were the problems with it? And what is it? And what is this new one seeking to fix? I I, I don't want us to always go go back to to to. It's, that, it's good know, to learn it, from it, the past it, yes, to help it, us it's inform a, it's us a guide. for something tomorrow. It's a guide, like 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 I said. Um, we, we would always want to improve upon what we do, especially in communicating to 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 our stakeholders. Um, you realize that we, we, we need to be very proactive rather than being reactive. Mm. That is why we need um, a strategy that will help us to, to you know, get the information out there. The information is not for the Electoral Commission, but it is for Ghanaians. And, 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 and therefore, we must make sure that everything that we do, Ghanaians understand, not only putting out the, the information out there, by letting them understand exactly what we do. And we think that if we are able to do this, to increase the transparency that we've always talked about, it will also increase the accountability that we've, we've also talked about. OK. I look at the communication objectives as spelled out in the document you gave out today as the communication strategy. You mentioned reposition the EC's redefined brand identity through clear, certain, congruent, and a consistent communications Cross to its stakeholders. Nice set of words. What does it mean in reality? We we have a five-year strategic plan that we are implementing. It will it will end in in 2020. Therefore, we must be able to send or sell the strategic plan to the outside world. We need a tool to do that, and this is the tool that we've we've launched today to help us, you know, sell the content of the strategic plan. Mm. Is that to mean that all the other elements that the EC needs to get this job done, and by that I mean the real election issues in terms of the equipment, the funding, the budgeting for all of that, has all been sorted out and done, for which reason the communication now is clear on what to do? You know, the Electoral Commission, you know, implements activities. So if, if you realize we've done registration, we've, we've done exhibition, we are doing continuous registration. After continuous registration, we would, we would exhibit this, the, the, the register for persons whose names we deleted because they used the NHIS to register in 2012. Mm -hmm. We also exhibit um, the, the, the current continuous registration for them to, you know, go and, and check their names. After, after that, we open um, nominations for candidates to file to contest for the election. Mm. Then after that, before that, we, we have to come um, out with the final register, which would be used for the nomination. So after the nomination, then we'll, we'll, be, we'll be getting ready. When will the final register come out? Um, I'm, I'm very sure by, by the end of September, we should, we should get before the end of September, we should get the final register so because we would, we would be opening nomination, um, if I'm sure, between 29th and 30th of September. So that, okay. So it means you're opening nominations end of next month. Yes. So the register will come out before that. I'm, I'm pretty sure because it is the register that um, the, the candidates would, would need for persons in the register to be able to endorse their candidature before they, they, they go through the, uh, be, before they can file their nomination before the Electoral Commission. Okay. One of the desired outcomes of this communication strategy is to 
um, effective broad-based voter education to drive active voter participation. And this is the part that interests me a lot. Reduce false ballots by 50%. How do you intend doing this? So as, as, as I speak with, with you today, um, on Monday, we, we're going to the regions to, you know, um, uh, train our regional officers and the district officers with, with both the and NCC regional officers and the district officers on, on, on this campaign so that they could go to the grassroots to also propagate exactly what we want to do, especially with the sport, sport ballot. We think that uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be the case if we are able to educate the voters on, on how to validate the, the, their votes, then it will reduce the, the number of spoiled ballots. Will the voter education be done only during this period before the elections? Because some say that for a problem that has been with us for a very long time, two, three, four months of education will not fix the problem even by half. So is this something that will be done continuously even after the elections, or it will still be a few months to elections that you go do it? We. You know, the Electoral Commission alone cannot, you know, do all the education. We also expect the political parties who actually need the votes, you know, as part of their campaign to educate, you know, people as to how to validate and make sure that their votes are, are, are secured. But it doesn't mean that we will renege on, on our, our, our core mandate of, of also um, voter education. We, we, would, we, we still we would still continue educating, you know, voters. And we will also would um, want NCC, or our partner, to also, you know, be up and doing in order that we all come together to achieve uh, a same goal. They've not been up and doing, have they? They have, but you, you cannot blame them for not um, um, doing much because um, sometimes they complain of budgetary um, constraints. But, but even with, with this um, situation, they still try as much as possible to help us when, when it comes to voter education. Your goal also, and it's actually one of the things that was mentioned prominently today, to be a commission that is associated with trust, independence, and world-class service. Are these three things that you're falling short of as we speak? We are not, but if you look at the recent um, CDD Afro uh, barometer report, you realize that there are a considerable number of Ghanaians who still, you know, do not trust our processes. And um, the Electoral Commission has realized that it is because some of them do not understand exactly what we do. So if we put up a plan that would educate them on, on all our activities, procedures, we, we, we think that um, it, will, it would disabuse um, their minds for them to know that we, 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 we work in purposely because of, of, of of Ghanaians. Okay. My last question has nothing to do with this communication strategy, but it's still important in relation to the elections. For the process in selecting the company that will do the e-voting, when will that end? Uh, sorry, not the e-voting, the e-transmission of the results. We've, 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 uh, the companies have, have done the demonstration. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know the exact date that um, the, the one who wins the bid will be, will be selected to do the work. But um, we are in the process, and I'm sure that because of the exigency of, 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 uh, or the magnitude of, of the work that they are supposed to do, we would, we would finish in time so that they can also get all the equipment you know, in time so that we can roll out the, the uh, e-transmission of results. Mm. And for the political parties that had some concerns with how the process was going, have all their concerns been addressed? They were all present during the demonstration. They witnessed how the demonstrations were going. We, we allowed them to ask questions. And um, after, after they had um, asked all their questions and, their, and it's been addressed, uh, we were happy that they were all you know, happy that um, we would use this um, uh, process as a, 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 a complement to, to the manual um, collation that we've always used. Okay, Mr. Ayuba, thank you for your time. It's been a very busy day for you. I can tell your voice has even faded now, but thanks for joining us today. The, the Deputy Head of welcome. Communications for the Electoral Commission, 
uh, Mr. Yusuf Ayuba. We'll go for a quick break now. When we come back, we'll bring you some sports. The draw for the Europa League has been done. Other issues to uh, grabbing the attention of those in the sports world. We'll bring it all to you here on the show. After the break, after sports, we'll also talk about tomorrow's big event, especially for journalists across the country. We'll look at how things have gone in the past one year in the media fraternity and what to expect tomorrow at the GJ Awards. Stay with us.